Hi everyone, welcome to Be Smart Together. Before we start, please click subscribe and turn on the notification to avoid missing valuable videos. Also, feel free to drop a comment below. Say we have a worth of 3 weeks timesheet summary report. We want to add subtotal columns or a total column. You would normally go to the Add Column tab, and use the Add Custom Column function. Say you want to add a subtotal for Monday time, and manually add all the Monday columns to get the subtotal. Then, the subtotal will be added. Go back to the Custom Column window, delete the codes, and replace them with an underscore. You will get the records for each row. The key to the conditional sum is to let Power Query know which column you want by giving the keyword which is Monday. First, we need the record field names function to get the column names. Then, the list select and text start with functions are a great combination in this case to select only Monday. After we get the column names, we use the record select fields function to get the record fields we need. Add the underscore for the first argument, then finish up the formula with a close parenthesis. We need to turn the record into a list with the record to list function. Lastly, we use the list sum function to sum the list of numbers. There you go. Isn't it that simple? Sometimes, you may experience inconsistent column names and the demonstrated method not working for you. Let me show you an alternate method that does not rely on column names. Let's clear the highlighted existing formula, and replace it with an underscore. We then add the record to list to turn each record into a list. We want to filter for numbers only from the list. In this case, the list select and value type functions are great for filtering for type number. Now you have the list of numbers, and you can use the list last n function to specify and return the last x numbers on the list, or use the list range function to get a sequence of numbers in and where within the list, or the list first n to get the first x numbers from the list. In this case, we want to use the list alternate function. Add the function as highlighted in the formula bar. I will explain a bit more about this function separately. You get to all the time for Monday. We then use the list sum function to sum up the list. You get the same result as per the previous method. Let's add a custom step, and L will explain more about the list alternate function. First, let's create a list containing 1 to 5 representing Monday to Friday. Then, use the list repeat function to repeat the list three times, representing three weeks. Now, add the list alternate function. The first argument is a list, and the second argument is how many items to skip type 1 in the formula bar for the second argument. The first one on the list is being skipped. The third argument is repeat interval, which means repeating the specific times before it skips again as argument 2 and it is an optional argument. It skipped every second item and retain every second one. The fourth argument tells the code where to start. Suppose the second to fourth arguments are all one. The list starts with the first item as specified, skipping every second item, and repeating the same logic until the end. We want to start from one and skip four items, then keep one and repeat the same logic. So, we change the second argument to four. Here you go. We now have all the Mondays and applied the same logic in the previous method. Thank you for watching, and I hope you find this video helpful. Please don't forget to click like if you like the video, and feel free to drop any comment if there is any particular topic you want to know.